the web. New Yorkers couldn't function without taxis. The cab industry generates more than $1 billion a year with the average ride pricing out at about $6. Leon Merstein started in business 60 years ago driving a taxi. His son Alvin grew the business from $2 million to $100 million. Now, 31-year-old grandson Andy has his own goals. Cab riders in New York City, um, there's 166 million people per year who ride New York City taxi cabs. No, and 166 million correct. people per year correct. ride in a taxi in New York. It's a very large niche industry. There's 11,787 taxis that's been frozen since 1937. In 1937, when my grandfather got involved, they started selling those medallions for about $10 a piece. They froze that number for the last 60 or so years, and today they're each worth $200,000 now. So the value of all the New York State cabs is over $2.4 billion. Before 1979, we really only owned and managed cabs, but now we wanted to get into a new area within the cab business, and we went into financing and financing was a natural step for us because when we started selling some of the taxis that we owned in 1979, we saw there was no financing source available for it. So we had to take back the paper ourselves. We thought it was a great opportunity since no banks would lend to this business for whatever reason, to start lending to the cab industry and that's how we started. In the cab business, it's really how hung hungry you are and how much you want to succeed in business. So what I think is great is you have a lot of minorities who come here from abroad who want to be their own boss. They can't open a, their own real estate company there's perhaps a lot of obstacles, it takes a lot of money, but the cab business is something they can go into right away. We'll finance 80% perhaps of their purchase price, they'll have to come up with a small down payment, and then they make their own hours, they do what they want, they feel like they own something. A lot of banks, for some reason, do not lend to the people that we lend to. They're excellent credit risks. The problems that banks have with them is they don't have long financial histories. They don't walk into the door with five years audited financial statements. They probably don't know what an audited financial statement is. So we give them the opportunity to really succeed in business where banks pass on them for whatever reason. And our loan losses, we've lent over $300 million in the cab industry since 1979 and never once lost one cent of principal or interest on any loan we've ever done in the history of the company. I don't think one one bank in the United States can make a statement like that. Medallion Funding recently formed an advertising company called Taxi Tops. It is a perfect source of new revenue because Medallion pays their customers, the taxi cab owners, a fee, then collects from the advertisers. In every few years or so, a new opportunity comes around, and the Taxi Tops was one of them. What we do is we go out to cab companies and we sign agreements with them to place the taxi tops on top of their cars. You, you own this physical Correct. thing. We own that. We do everything for them. There's no cost to them at all, so it's really an easy sell. It's okay, found but money. you're in this industry, so it's a match. It's a fit for you. Yes, it's good. So the principle for someone who wants to expand their business is to look within the marketplace that they're already placed. Correct. And see how can we add on that's that's efficient for yes, you. Yes, I find you have all the contacts. Correct. I think it's very difficult to go outside your normal line of business. From time to time we look at getting involved in areas outside the cab industry. There's just there's a lot of setup costs and time that needs to go into looking into a business, making contacts, developing relationships. The tops work perfectly for us in that we knew the cab owners anyway because they're customers of ours. Right. We lend them money, we help grow their businesses, so it's a natural tie-in for us. And I think that's really the best way to expand businesses is not develop brand new networks or brand new subsidiaries, is really to tie in what you do best. You really need to develop a niche. My grandfather who started the cab business 60 years ago and he used to say in niches there's riches and that's kind of our motto. We try to stay with what we do best. Take a taxi, also Medallion recently became a special small business investment company which allows them to receive matching funds from the Small Business Administration when they make loans to women and minorities. Michael Fanger handles these special loans for Medallion. 
We're about to meet uh, Albert Lee, Kyung Wan Lee. And he came to this country and he started in New York driving at night, delivering vegetables to the fruit and groceries. And in 1985, with some family money that was loaned to him, he purchased a laundromat and dry cleaner from another family member. To all of our businesses, we try to stay with what we know best. My grandfather said 60 years ago when he started the business, told my father, in niches there's riches. And to really try to stay with what you do best and stay in your own backyard. Do you think there's a big difference between your grandfather's management style, thoughts, philosophy, and your father? Yes, I think there's a big difference from each generation. I think every generation uh, obviously has different goals as far as how far they want to succeed. Uh, I'm probably not going to be happy unless in seven years we're a one billion dollar company. I think we're really on our way now and I don't think a hundred million, although it, it's very impressive, uh, is very satisfactory to me personally. We should be one of the largest lenders in New York City if we continue doing what we're doing and really grow the business. And I think we have an excellent staff that we've added on throughout the years. And with their help, we should be able to get to that amount in about seven years or so. You, you really should be thinking big, but you also have to be practical. You can't imagine yourself going from zero to a billion dollars. You need a foundation to get there. My father gave me that opportunity with that foundation of a hundred million dollar company. So a billion dollars is not out of the ordinary for us, I think. Without his help, I would never be thinking about that. But with the foundation he's built, I think it's a very possible goal to reach.